Good morning. Um, I know I'm out here. I'm gonna take this into the kitchen here. Dogs are a little wild right now. Um, but real quick, I just wanted to show you guys, give you a peek at the puppies. Um, we'll be bringing them in uh, when the adults go outside and we can kind of move them in slowly. Um, it's looking slide around the kitchen. Um, and then we'll bring the adults in and to come and play with them. Um, but you can see that we really got to vacuum this up. So um, that's another part of the reason we want to bring them in. I also placed a stool here so that they stop pushing this out for a little for sleepy time. Hey puppies, do you want to come say hi? I know, I know. We'll bring you guys on camera soon, won't we? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. We'll bring you guys out soon. And we've got my run running here. My run running. Oh, I got a notice too that my 87 puppy toys were being delivered today. Yay, I'm so excited. And there's Robin's puppies. Um, when, man, you guys pooped a lot since I. I picked up your poop. I just scooped their tray about an hour ago and it looks like I never did it. Um, but so uh, we've got all those toys coming for them and I'm really excited because they're awesome. Um, what else did I want to share with you guys? Uh, um, oh, and we are still, we're still working out kind of the terms of the giveaway that we're gonna do. Um, we thought it would be a good time, Christmas coming up, and um, it's going to be like a little RBC channel giveaway. Um, uh, like it'll have RBC stuff in it. We wanted to, we'll wait till we have the winner for, um, in order to get a t-shirt size for merch. No. Don't mind the soda packets here to stop Robin from getting into our garbage can. Um, I know it's been a couple of days since we've done the kitchen camp. Reason for that is because the kids were off of school for break, and especially when they're off of school for break, we don't want to we want to let them come into the kitchen and have breakfast without a camera being in their faces. So, um, you know, when we, when they are here and we have the kitchen cam on, um, we usually uh, we kind of let them know. We're kind of we do let them know when. Um, let them know if they want to come in here or not. If they don't want to come in here, they can um, eat in the dining room. But we like to give them, when they're home, we like them to be able to hang out in the kitchen without the live stream on. So. No. Um, oh. Um, oh, the giveaway. So, hold on, just a Robin. second. Robin. This is the gold trash box. You want me putting together is it's going to be for two viewers. Sorry. Yeah. Diana, you go finish eating. I know you need to eat. Are you done eating? No, Paris. Paris, out. 
Paris. No, Paris. Um, anyway. So the um, the giveaway is going to be it's like a little, little dog toy basket and we're gonna put um, some of the things that you see on our channel on there like during live streams. So it's, it'll have a lamp chop. Um, we're gonna do a stuffle mat and we're gonna um, we're gonna get one of the stuffle mats that we have um, compared to, as opposed to like there are some knockoff stuffle mats and they're they so, they're so terrible they just they fall apart. Um, I guess let me know if anybody is able to find a knockoff that is good. Because, um, well, it's not like stuffle mats are expensive, but. Um, and so, but it's gonna be a little dog toy basket. In fact, I've got one. I can show you what the dog toy basket looks like. all right so this is a dog toy basket that um it's not the specific one but um the basket that we have coming um looks a lot like this it's i think it's just um instead of black i think it's like a dark gray daisy 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 i saw you upstairs daisy Come on. Oh, you're not Daisy. You're Myra. Come on, Myra. Come on, Myra. Myra. No, 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 no. Testing my patience. Testing my patience. All right, there we go. Well, it's not going to stop. Oh, man. All right, let's try this again. Okay, so our giveaway. So the, um, this is the toy basket, but like I said, this isn't the toy basket. Sorry, the camera is crooked and it's driving me crazy. What are you, what are you doing, Missy? It smells good. It smells so Why good. is this crooked? It's on a ball joint, and so it drives me crazy if it's not crazy stuff. If it's not perfectly Daisy. Daisy. Daisy dog. Juicy, juicy. Oh, it's the bottom won't even attach. Um, so we're gonna fill the basket that looks like this. It's um, a dark gray. Um, we're gonna fill it with some things that uh, are familiar with RBC, specifically like the lamb chop, the snuffle mat. Um, and then we're going to get, we wanna include some merch and so we will of course um you know when we get the basket and put it together we won't have the merch in it because we want to wait and get sizes um and we'll probably put something in there that isn't a size item so we can we can just order it and put it in there we've got some things like tote bags um i don't let, let us know what you guys would like to have in it um if you would use i don't know maybe we have some bakers we have some rbc aprons um, uh, we could even do something where we will, um, we could take a picture from you and make it into like an RBC shirt. So like if you have, um, like I'll use, um, Nisho style, I'll use Biscuit as an example. If Nisho, if Nisho won the giveaway and wanted to, um, have Biscuit on one of our t-shirts, we can do a mock-up of, um, one of our 
um, Red Barn Cavalier t-shirts, and instead of our dogs, we'll put Biscuit in there. Um, so, but let us know what, um, what? because the Remy. the merch part of the giveaway is still kind of open. We're still um, taking ideas. Remy. Um, and of course, we don't we don't want to give away merch they don't even want. So we want you to get some use out of it too. So, um, you know, the size, the t-shirt can kind of wait until we have a winner. Um, because we need to get the size and then we can find out like what shirt you like. Um, but the things that don't have sizes that we can just buy outright, um, let us know what you guys would like to see in here. Um, if you would like it to be more dog items, if you would like it to be more, um, people things, but I think we're going to kind of do a little bit of both. Um, so it'll be the snuffle mat, lamb chop, um, some of those toys, so I've got that shipment of 87 toys coming. Um, those ones with the little tails that our puppies love. Um, all of our dogs love those, so we'll put some of those in there. Um, what else did we have? We had, it was like six or seven things I had in mind, and I'm drawing a blank. I need to make a list. Um, hi, sweetie. You're a good girl. But yeah, we wanted to do a t-shirt when it comes to merch. We wanted to do a t-shirt or like a clothing item and then a non-clothing item from the merch shop. So, um, but it'll all go in the basket. But we won't send you the one that our dogs have been <laughs> making smell just like them. Uh, and so, but we just want, we wanted to do the giveaway to, as like, we've been trying to think of how we can um, show you guys that we appreciate you. And I feel like we say it, but, um, you know, we don't, I feel like that just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't cover really how much we really do appreciate you guys, because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have a channel. I mean, we, we could, we would have our channel that we streamed our puppies on, but we never dreamed of having so many people who, who weren't getting puppies from us um, find us and come back and um, get to know us and our dogs and be a support because it's a, an emotional roller coaster, um, especially when, especially when, because we don't, I feel like we don't just breed dogs because we were raising them for ESA purposes. And so there's, there's the dog breeding part, but there's also the, um, the like emotional support aspect oh, where, um, uh, you know, we, we are breeding a specific type of dog, I guess, and <laughs> this has got me on we're, we're, um, breeding a specific type of dogs that, um, appeals to a certain type of families and, um, it's just we like to we like to match dogs to families and the exposure on YouTube has really helped us connect with some families that like didn't even know they needed an ESA um, until they saw our channel and they usually uh, we've heard from two families now that they essentially heard the story about May in Paris where May was going through a really bad time and we brought Paris and Pom Pom home and I had taken May to, with me to pick them up. And we stayed overnight in Oklahoma, and um, uh, Paris just like at that time, May was really struggling with her anxiety, and um, it was just it was just you, you know when things like that just are, I'm sure many of you can just you you get what I'm saying, but she was just at that in that headspace, and it was really really difficult for her to kind of to pull herself out of it, and you know how that. Feels, I'm sure, where it's like you, you're not happy with the way things are, but it's like, what are you gonna do? What can you do? Um, and having Paris, it was like Paris. I think just she's such an ESA dog that she's really meant to be an ESA because we, um, you know, I only really noticed this in hindsight, but when we went back to the hotel and May laid down on the bed, we had two queen beds, and May laid down on one. And Paris did zoom right over to May's bed and snuggled up with her. And I have pictures of her sleeping with both of them. 
and Paris is snuggled up super close. And Palm is nearby, but she was like, just kind of like, okay. And it was just funny because it's very, it's very much their personalities. Palm really loves everybody, and she doesn't latch to one person. Um, and Paris just loves me. Um, in fact, I just removed a comment on the short that I made of Paris when she had her C-section. I just wrote a comment that was like, it's, it, I can't remember exactly the phrasing. It was in another language, so it was Google Translate. Um, but it was basically like, she's so tired from having puppies. Can't you just let her rest and have a good life? And I got really frustrated by that comment, and so I just rage removed it. <laughs> And I wish I would thought to like leave it and respond and explain so for anybody else that comes past and might read that um, she's living her best life. She sleeps with her favorite person every single night, and like she, there's a very happy dog. And so um, it can be, it, it gets kind of, it gets frustrating. You know, it gets frustrating when. Um, when someone just comes by our channel and sees that we raise puppies and they just assume that raising puppies means we are not taking care of them, not paying attention to them and that they're unhappy. And I bet they really, a lot of people would be blown away to see how Daisy is like upset. Like Daisy is addicted to being a mom so much that she goes and adopts puppies that don't even belong to her. Hey, Mocha. Hey, Mocha. Um, but, you know, and I guess that's kind of part of the territory because when Drew and I set out to do this, the whole point was that we wanted, we had this vision of what, where our cavalier should be coming from. And, um, you know, we've shared with a lot of our families what the experience was like, you know, after we're doing all the research and, um, you know, price comparison and, um, I felt like for the price, we, I kind of expected a better experience. I don't want to. I don't want to talk bad about other breeders. I don't want to get too much into it. But suffice it to say that um, we, our our idea was to um, create what we couldn't find, and we couldn't find a breeder who had their dogs just living in their house with them, and especially because they're ESAs, they're all really close to, or not all of them, but um, the ESA dogs are really close to us where they sleep in bed with their people. Hi, mommy. And, um, uh, that was my train of thought. Um, we hadn't seen, we had, we really couldn't find a breeder that, um, it seemed like, um, a lot of times the dogs were put into a separate area, whether it was in their home or in like another building. Like if we were to use the, we call it the grandma shed, because we planned it for it to be an in-law apartment one day. But the grandma shed that we have out back, um, a lot of, I think a lot of breeders, they, you know, when it's just a male and a female and then they have, they have a litter, it's real easy to keep them in your house. But if you, um, if you don't have like a potty training system, and most breeders don't, if you don't have a potty training system, um, the house is gonna stink like poop and pee really bad. Um, and so I think that a lot of times, um, breeders don't intend to end up moving the dogs elsewhere, um, but I think it's like a cleanliness thing. They, you know, it's difficult to keep up with. We, Drew would usually do all of the, the scraping of the floor when before we introduced the the potty training, and he would get down on his hands and knees with like a little credit card, and he would just scrape every square inch of that pen. But the thing is, is even with that, they're walking through it that whole time, and they jump up on the panels, and so the poop gets under their fingernails, that gets in the panels, and so it gets in all kinds of places that you can't clean out. I mean, you can, but you're not going to be able to find it all. With each individual pen change. What's up, sweetie? Okay, I will bring it right up. Okay. Give me five minutes. 
I told her I'd bring some stuff to her, just like her things that she left downstairs. Um, Daisy. Daisy. What was that? Not right now because you don't have a shirt on, and I've got the live stream on. Well, still. I wasn't feeling well this morning, so we kept her home to be on the safe side. Yeah. Um. But uh, so I can I can see I can kind of understand how breeders they might set out to do um, to have their dogs real like entrenched in their family life um, and then realize that you know once they reach a certain age you know mom stops eating their poop because it it goes pretty scent free odor free for the first like four weeks and then mom stops eating their poop once their diet becomes at least like half dog food. And once it was about half dog food, mom stops eating their poop. And so that's when it starts getting stinky. And um, after our, it was only a month later and Drew and I turned to each other and we were just like, we, we can't keep doing this like with them in our house and part of the family if it's gonna, if it's gonna make our whole house stink like poop morning, morning and night, um, we have to come up with a solution. And so we did some research and we found the um pine pellet training and that was how we got daisy it was when we, ran, we um ran to daisy daisy was the last puppy in her litter and she her breeder had been um trained with racer with the pine pellets and so she was our one and only dog that came raised with pine pellets and her potty training with pine pellets is like it's far superior to all of our other dogs that um, we brought home at eight weeks and then trained them on the pine pellets. Her potty training is is really, really, really good. In fact, so she slept overnight in our bedroom. As just as an example, so she slept overnight in our bedroom um, this morning. Um, we got up at six a.m. to get the kids ready for the school bus and you know breakfast, get dressed, all that good stuff. And Daisy follows me everywhere. And so we were you know, just walking through the house up to bedrooms, back downstairs, um, taking the first, you know, taking Bradley up to the school bus and then uh, making sure May's up because you know, her teenagers are with their alarms. Um, and she followed me everywhere and she hadn't been outside yet. We don't usually take them outside you know, until all the buses are going past. And um, so, um, Somewhere in, in there, I put her in with the puppies um, to nurse them and, you know, do what she does. She was very happy. But she did that. She hung out with them for a while. Um, and I brought her in here. Um, Robin had jumped out of her pen, and so I went to go and find Robin. And um, I brought Daisy in here and then um, found Robin, came back in here, and saw that Daisy had gone over and used the potty tray. Um, and you so there was like a giant daisy turd and then right in front of it was a, a giant wet pine puddle tray like a pine puddle mess and um i could tell it looked like she probably got in there really had a poop and so she pushed that out and as soon as that was out then she started peeing and so it looked urgent and i just i was really proud of her because that was probably times it now seven o'clock now so that was probably at about um, oh, that was at 7.45. So we got up at 6, and that was at 7.45, because that was right after May got on the bus. And um, so she had all that time to either, like, she could have used the puppy potty tray, but you will, I don't think I've ever seen one of the adults use the puppy's potty tray. Um, and I think that's another instinct thing. They don't want to mix their own waste in the area that the puppies are in. Um and so she she could have used we also have a tray um that services our bedroom it's in the doggy bathroom and we open up that door and she knows that's there so she can go use it um but i was just really proud of her that we did all this walking around all over the house and you know she had to go but she she doesn't like to go outside it's snowing that's the other thing is there's snow on the ground and so outside is not really an option oh i see um and so Daisy really prefers to only use the tray. Oh, and I also got a message from Lottie Dottie's mom who says that uh, Lottie is not a real big fan of <laughs> pooping and in the snow and that the tray has been a big win. 
So that makes me really happy to hear because whenever we have big snowstorms, like the tray is just worth its weight in not just gold, but like it is worth every moment that they have spent cleaning up like the shavings and the mess that it can make. Um, when we see the dogs turn around and feline back to the inside because um, before the tray, when that happened, we couldn't even like force them out to go potty. They would just stand at the door waiting to go back in and then they would potty when they got in. Right. Come here. And so like we could it's not, it wasn't even a matter of just like leaving them outside and giving them enough time to potty because they just wouldn't. They would just hold it and stay at the door and wait for us to come and get them, you know, scratch at the door, jump on the door, do you know what they do to get our attention. Um but they won't go and potty. And so that was like an issue that we were having to resolve back when we introduced the potty trays. And so um, it's been a huge help. Like it's that hoop and potty that Daisy did in the tray um, that essentially prevented an accident because <laughs> she was not going to want to go outside in the snow. But you are, <laughs> Ronnie still thinks she, yeah, <laughs> You're too big for this. You're too big. Yes, you're a girl. Wow, look at that, Remy. Um, oh, and then I also wanted to talk to you guys, and I might even make a video about it. I don't know. Um, so we've been talking about hernias a lot. And um, uh, Hernias are umbilical hernias specifically are really, really, really unfortunate for in puppies. And um, it's something that we're always watching for um, because they it's hard to tell early on um, because the umbilical cord it needs to heal. And no Remy. You want to go to I lost my arm. Oh, hold on, the school is calling me. Oh, they're probably wondering why that was not. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you may come in, but remember, it's a school day and you're staying home sick, so you've got to take it easy and rest. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, but so we've been talking about hernias a lot. Ella, that's not resting, no dancing. Remember, you're sick, and we can still take you to school if you're feeling well. Um, uh, hernias. So um, I wanted to show you guys while we had a chance. Um, um, so we're always monitoring them for hernias because they're just so common. And um, the first couple of weeks, it's always hard to tell because um, the cord is healing. And, um, and basically how the hernias occur is there's, when the umbilical cord is still intact, it's, you know, it's, it's a tunnel for the, the blood to go through. And so once that comes off and dries out, um, it's called the umbilical ring. And it basically tightens up like this and eventually closes. And so those first couple of weeks, it's you know, still open, but because it's like dried and shriveled up, it's just no bleeding or anything, it's closed off. Um, but it won't always close all the way. And that's partly why it takes some time to tell if the puppy has a hernia. Um, and there's some debate about the cause. They're not entirely sure it's partial genetics, partial, um, trauma when, uh, mom is trying to get it off. Um, 
um because nope. you've seen any of our delivery videos you've seen how rough mom is with with puppies um she's not gentle by any means and um and so the other school of thought um, is that there is some like injury done to that area when mom is if mom's being really rough, and um, and I think it's kind of a combination of the two. So um, partly because like if it was genetic, because we have had puppies with hernias, and if it was genetic, I feel like we would have had a lot more puppies with hernias. Um, and the puppies we have had with hernias, usually we look back and it's a mom that was pretty pretty like aggressive with that particular puppy. Um, and so, but they start showing up usually between like four and five weeks. Um, except last summer, we were surprised to find out that we had a puppy who had developed one after eight weeks. And, um, and I don't think it was pretty small. It wasn't a bad one. Um, and when that happens, um, Vets usually take a very conservative approach because sometimes you don't need to do much and it'll it'll heal on its own. Um, and what they'll have you do is basically anytime you pick up your puppy or hold them, you just always feel for it with, with your finger and then you just kind of massage it back in, pop it back in. And then that allows the that ring to continue healing. Um, and then you get, do that for about six months. And if... If it's not um, healed by six months, then when they do when they do the fix, when you spay or neuter, they can um, go in there and put a stitch in it to to repair it um, while your puppy's already under anesthesia. So you're not doing extra anesthesia. Um, but in some cases, it is um, it will be significant enough that they do want to put a stitch in earlier. Because puppies do run around, they get the zoomies, and so if it's bad enough, um, if it's bad enough, they'll want to um, put a stitch in earlier so that they don't end up getting a strangled intestine because that it's not good. <laughs> um, but usually, in most cases, it can just be. Here, hold on, see for a second. In most cases, it can be repaired conservatively, and it'll just go away on its own. Um, but I did want to show you, uh, when we bring the puppies in, um, poor little Miss Sunshine is, of the, is in the Umbilical Maria Club. Um, it appeared probably about a week ago, and... Um, and it didn't even appear at first. I could just feel it. I could feel that little, um, it feels like a little hole and right where their belly buttons are. And it was very small. And so I wasn't sure. And then I had Drew feel, feel it. And he kind of had that like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a healthy belly button. And, um, and the next day, sure enough, that we were starting to see like a little bubble. And, um, and like, it's like once they appear, it takes, it's like that couple of days where we'll feel it and you can start to see it. And then if you like hold them, like upright so you can see their bellies, it'll pop out and you can see it. In fact, I'll just go get her so you guys can see. Bella, hey, go upstairs and take your right hand. Huh? Huh? Ella, you're staying home from school sick. sick. So you need to be resting. Uh, gone through. Daddy took all your, your toys upstairs. I love you, Bella Bella. All right. <laughs> I might have to put the other dogs somewhere. I mean, they're being good. So. Patrick is a star. Yeah. Patrick. Oh, yeah, you're right. That is Patrick. Patrick. Let's see. Okay. So you see that bubble? 
can't quite see the computer, so I'm not sure if you guys can see the dogs. bubble. Come here, dogs. Right Missing. there. And so um, the first day that we noticed it didn't, um, she didn't even have that little bubble. It was a lot, it was a lot um, smaller. Sometimes we can see it a little bit better. Oops. Daisy, get back. The dogs all want to see. Myra's like, what are you, what's wrong, what's wrong with my puppy? Um, watch out. And so that's what an umbilical hernia looks like on a puppy. Um, and so what we, so what we, um, we talked to her mom about it and we explained what you do. And so you, that little bubble, you just want to take the pad of your finger. All right, dogs. Go. It should be a lot easier. I shouldn't get it. So, so there's her little hernia, and so this is a like a um a very mild hernia. Like I said, it just appeared about a week ago, and um, if it was a bad hernia, we would have seen it sooner. Um, because even a week ago, it didn't even bubble out yet. But so, what the vet um will have you do and what we instruct our families to do is when you see that little bubble, um, you just take the pad of your finger and you just kind of massage it around. And so like, I always go like around the outside of it um, and it just slowly works its way back in. Um, as it heals and the umbilical ring begins closing more, um, you will have to apply a little bit more pressure to get it in because that space is smaller. And so now you can see that the bubble is, the bubble is in. Now, these first um, couple of weeks of doing that exercise, it doesn't usually stay in right after putting it in um, because it's like just, you know, the, the hole is at its biggest size that it's gonna be. And so you just gotta make sure that um, every time you pick her up, and so that's why we make a habit of, um, you know, if we're picking the, you know, if she's in the pen right now and we're just picking her up to dip up her nails, um, just pick her up and you just kind of, we'll just use our fingers and just kind of feel for that bubble. And if we feel their bellies and no bubble, then, then great. But if we feel a bubble, we'll push it in and then be like, hmm, where'd your bubble come from? Hey, sweetie. All right, put right in here. Yeah. Yes, they were all they were all coming in front of me and whacking the camera with their tails. Um, and so, but that's that's what a pretty mild, pretty mild one. Um, I wouldn't anticipate that um, her fa her her family's vet would want to repair it. Our vet said that he would he would just wait um, because it, the thing is is if um, if the vet wants to repair it now. It's something that Drew and I would go do so that you're not taking your puppy home and um, you're not taking your puppy home and having to go um, and put your puppy under anesthesia right away. And so um, and I popped back out, so I'm going to put it back in now. Um, but uh, and especially because when the vet wants to repair it earlier, you know, if they're six weeks old. Um, that's really it for safety. And so if that's the, if that's the recommendation from the vet, we would do it then at six weeks old when they're still with us so that, um, nothing happens like, um, the strangling of the intestine that doesn't happen, you know, when they're running around playing with the litter mates. And so, um, luckily we haven't had that come up 
Um, like I said, um, we think that there's a mixture of genetics and um, the way mom handles the umbilical cord, just because if it was genetics, um, if we have a couple of puppies that have had hernias, if it was genetics, I think it would have been a whole lot more. It would have been, um, it would have been like, it would have been the norm to have hernias and to not have hernias would be the exception. Um, and so, um, and also after seeing how aggressive our moms can be with the cords, but it can be a pain and just, you know, just, it's just something to deal with that you don't want to have to deal with. But overall, it's not, um, you know, always have it evaluated, um, especially if you think your puppy has developed a hernia that wasn't there before. Um, you always want to have it evaluated and make sure that, um, so like right now I'm sharing, I'm trying to share with you that, um, you know, this is common, it happens, this is how it's usually handled. Um, don't panic if this is what you're told. However, um, there are the cases where it is something that needs to be repaired um, because there are ones that are much worse than this that can happen. And um, in those cases, you do want to get them repaired right away so that um, nothing happens to your puppy because um, they can get injured if the hernia is big enough that um, that it can escape through that hole and then have more damage caused. So um, always consult with your vet. And um, in fact, we have had one situation where um, where our vet said um, this one can wait. And then the family took their puppy home and their vet was like, I, I would rather do it now. And so that's why we just say just consult your vet because another thing is it changes over time. And so if... You know, at here, we're able to push it in nonstop. You know, every time we pick up the puppy, we're able to push it in and it's healing and doing well. Um, and the puppy goes home and you're working eight hours a day and the puppy is, you know, has eight hours where it's not being pushed back in. Um, that might be, depending on how bad it is. I mean, we've still seen them heal when, um, when in those situations where families have been busy families and couldn't be pushing it in all day. But um, there are just, there are times where, you know, things are going one way at our house because we're here with them all the time. And realistically, when puppy goes home to you, um, realistically, when puppy comes home to you, there are just some things that we, we understand that you're not going to be able to keep up with because Drew and I are here doing this full time. And, um, you're not, <laughs> you're working, you have your own job, your own responsibilities. And so we realize that the things that we can do with the puppies aren't necessarily things that you can do. Are you all done, Vienna? You don't like it? Or mocha? I'm gonna bring some puppies over. Oh wait, I'm gonna wait because the dogs. Well, are they gonna? They ate already, so. Yeah, they're eight. So. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna bring the supple mat in. Yeah, that's fine. Remy, Remy. Supple mat. No, that's good. Remy, dog. Maybe mocha will eat more. Yeah. yeah, you guys can see. Sunshine. Sunshine is in the potty tray in the laundry room.
I'm going to stuff them out with the puppies mocha. Oh, I saw that Michelle and Vicky, I saw you guys are on. Um, I took a quick glance and I saw your guys' names. So I wanted to say good morning to you. Um, your package that you sent us, Michelle and Vicky sent us a nice little care package. Um, they went to a dog show and, um, you know, dog shows have all kinds of things that they're promoting. And so they sent us all kinds of things that they got. And it's awesome. They sent us... Um, these chew bones and I didn't look too closely at what they were because it was a bit of an emergency um the boys were going crazy they were going crazy because Pom is at her like peak fertility in fact I think she'll probably start going down tomorrow maybe we might start having some peace tomorrow but Pom is at her peak fertility and so if she like when we bring her through the four seasons room the boys have their crates in there and so um, they go nuts. And so if they smell that she's been through recently, they will like, there've been times I wondered if they can knock this door down. They like really, they don't mess around like those, um, the, um, talk about how boys, boy dogs can get through anything to their females in heat is no joke. Um, especially if they have not made it at all already like if they've already made it this cycle um we've noticed that they're not nearly as um thirsty <laughs> um but if they haven't if they haven't gotten together with her at all then they're so yeah they're dying um so pom pom the boys were just losing it this is oh drew is taking um Philip and Carter back to their mom and so it was just me and um I'd gotten the kids to bed and was trying to like tuck the dogs in start relaxing it was like 8 45 and I was you know it'd been a long day at that point and um so that's why I said it was kind of an emergency I didn't really look at the packaging because I remember that you had sent us these like bones that I thought were supposed to like last a minute and so and I found we had two of them and I was so excited <laughs> And so I tore them open and I went out there and I gave them to the boys. And at first um, I gave one to Macchiato and he was really excited. And of course he took it like three feet and then just dropped it and came back to see what else I had. <laughs> and none of the other boys wanted to go grab it. Yeah. And um, I opened up the other one. I gave that one. That, Rio got that one. His wife didn't, didn't want it. Rio got that one. And Rio went. And he hid it in dad's tools. No, I didn't tell you about this. About so Rio might no. hid his bone in dad's tools. Macchiato was being kind of a doofus with his. I didn't have a third. So it was just two. But it, I was kind of hoping that maybe it would just like distract him and give him something to do. And it did. So Rio hid his in the tools. And so Spike and Macchiato were kind of hunting around for it. And um, at one point, I saw Rio with it in his mouth. And he took it outside. and. You know, a lot of times your dogs will take something outside and you'll never see it again. He took it outside and he came right back in with it in his mouth. He loves it. And then um, the other bone, so it just kind of got, was laying around on the floor. The other dogs, they were, they were um, so focused on what Rio had hidden. They forgot that there was one sitting right there on the ground. And so um, if, uh, so I brought the, you know, time, some time has passed. They're they're going outside again. That was about 8.45 that I had done that. And it's probably about 9.30. Um, I was putting the dogs outside for like, you know, that late night go out to potty one more time. And Paris, <laughs> it's like I opened the door and she knew right where it was. That dog has the nose of a bloodhound when it comes to food. She went right over to it. She picked it up, took it outside. And she had it, like, I never saw it again. I mean, she brought it back in, but it was in her mouth. And, like, I never saw her, like, lay down with it and chew it. I know that she was working on it, but I never saw her hide it. I've only seen um, her with it in her mouth, like, at various stages of being eaten. And um, it's been over a couple of days, and so I don't know if she's hiding it in between. I don't know where it goes. But every so often, I see her with, with a chunk of it, and each time that chunk is smaller. Um, 
And so I don't, and Rio, I think Rio did finally retrieve his from the tools because it was down to like this big. They started about this big and it was down about that big, like the size of a quarter, like a quarter squared or cubed or cubed. Yeah, quarter cubed. Um, Three dimensional quarter. Um, and so it was, just, it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, you guys sent us this really great care package and those two little goofy bones made for a really entertaining evening. Um, but it was nice. It was, it was fun to do with dogs and the dogs had some joy out of it. Oh, I was going to go get other puppies. That's right. I think mocha, oops, I think mocha discriminates, but not, not like the opposite of discriminating. Um, like she discriminates for the black and tans. Like she, she favors the black and tans, I think. Oh man, our little black and tan Charlotte, her fur is so darn soft. It just gets softer every day. Grabbing all fourteen. Yeah. Right. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Elizabeth. Michelle and Vicky. Good morning, Letty. Oh. Letty, you should be getting your package today. I hope it's out for delivery. I haven't checked the tracking, but I sent the tracking to Amber, so um, Amber should have uh, updates on it. What's up, Rocky? Hi! Looks like your booty is a little slippery. Oh my goodness, all your puppies are in the laundry room. Puppies! 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 They're like, we don't respond with that anymore. And there's so much stuff to see here. No, no, I don't want to put them all in here. 
This way, 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 this do it again. Come on, Maisie. Come on. Come on, puppies. Alright, it's all over. Yeah. I guess they're more interested in socializing than eating. Oh, oh I put this here. Gotcha. Oh my goodness. This is this is where we usually have the tray when I'm here. So it's another thing um, for anybody who uses the potty tray at home. Um, whether it's one of our puppies or you introduce a tray to your own puppy, um, if they've gotten used to it in a certain spot in a particular room, um, be careful before you change it um, just because they've gotten really used to that location. And so if they're playing over here and suddenly have to go potty, you want it to be in the spot that like first comes to mind. Um, relearning um, a new location, you're usually going to have some accidents and some oopsies, um, especially because they've gotten used to that spot. And so that's why we don't want to, um, if they have to potty, they're probably going to be looking in this general area. Maisie, you are so beautiful. I love how each of her limbs ends with white, like all four feet and her tail. It would only be like perfect if it was the tips of her ears too. Oh, they all love Mocha so much. Mocha, you are very loved by the puppy doodles. Mocha's our new Remy. This is how Remy was when she was a baby. We would put her in with the puppies, just like we do with Mocha, and she just would play nonstop, nonstop. She wouldn't, she wouldn't stop until the puppies stopped. Hi. Oh my goodness, Bobby! Oh, did you send a picture, of Bobby? To oh, why not? You go grab the um. The bow. Do that. <laughs> this is gonna be filled with pie and shit. I'm okay with this because they're having fun. They're having fun and they're behaving. They're doing they're being good points. You know, they're not they could be laying around chewing on furniture. So we want to give them healthy habits. This is a good healthy habit. Hello, Bobby. Oh, hi. You're a master speaker. Oh my goodness, Charlotte! Hello, hello! You've got so much momentum. Hi! Hi, hi, hi! Oh, you guys, I can hear you guys panting. You can slow down a little bit. You can slow, slow down. You can slow down. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? I never knew this. <laughs> these guys had little like that's what it's for. Little, little keyways to get it off without ripping it. I did not know that they had those. Oh. Oh, the end <laughs> this is how they were when we put them in the living room. Um, was it yesterday or the day before? Yesterday. The camera, since Puppy's got it. Oh. Wait, is there someone in the laundry room? Oh no, it's just here. But this is how the puppies were being. This is when I was trying to pose them. And the video I shared it wasn't supposed to be a video, it was supposed to be a thumbnail. <laughs> so 
So imagine trying to pose all 12 of these puppies like this. <laughs> just trying to herd them, and I gave it like a minute before I just decided to make it a video. <laughs> you guys are awesome. That's the boys. Because Pom is in here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Is it? Are you button? That's button. Button! My goodness! Button, you've gotten so big without Alfie here. I think you're Alfie. You're not Alfie. You're not button. You're button. Who are you? Wait, you're. Oh, you're Finnegan. Oh, man. Finnegan with Robin's puppies is like a. That's tough. He looks so much like Robin's puppies. He could pass as a Robin puppy. Good girl, Charlotte. Good girl, Potty. Good girl, Charlotte. Good girl, Potty. Pick that up and waste nobody's running at it. Stay away. No, anybody runs through that? Charlotte just pottied or went poop. Charlotte did? In the in gray? Yep. Good girl. I picked it up so Ooh. Ooh, a little on the looser side. On the loosey doosey side. Loosey. One thing about their um, gut when they're with us is it kind of seems like with all the you know the medication, the dewormer, and um, the food change and adjustment, it's like their gut is always being <laughs> the addition of water. Because we're on a well, and so that's when they start drinking water that's well watered, something like out of a water bottle. Um, it's a little bit more for their bodies to digest. Um, and so it kind of feels like your gut is always working with something. Who's a good boy? Who's a good Finny? I pulled that toy aside so we can send it home with you. Oh my goodness. Oh, Sean, I'm going to go again. No, I'm going to stay. Do you want to go to work straight? Because it seems like. Clean that up. I just grabbed a paper towel. Ah, don't go running through the turds. Good job, Clover. So proud of you, Clover. Good girl. What a good girl you are. Excuse me. Clover, go on pie like a big puppy. Yes, you are. Good girl. Don't drag your butt there, Charlotte. Charlotte, come here. Clean your booty. Clean that booty. 
A dirty booty? Huh? A dirty booty, do you? Good girl. Good girl. Good puppy. Look at you. Look at you guys wagging your tails. Over and butt it in. Is that you, Piper? No, who is that? Who is it? Oh, Finnegan. Oh, Finnegan. You troublemaker. Finnegan, what are you doing? Finnegan. 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 Mr. Finnegan. Who's this? Is this the sunshine? This is the sunshine. Hi, sunshine. Focus. Focus. No, no attacking the camera. No attacking the camera. No, no attacking the camera. No. Elizabeth, here's our coffee for you. Don't put it next to the computer. What's that? Alright. Okay, Bobby, we're still. Hey, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. What you doing, Bobby? Bobby, we're going to take a little photo shoot with you, Bobby. Bobby, Bob Barker, Bob Barker. Hey, Mocha, you're getting a little too aggressive, Mocha. Mocha? Oh gosh. Now we're doing that.
What is this? What is this mess? Oh my goodness, Clover, you are going crazy looking for the food. My goodness, Clover. Have you found it all? Have you found it all, Clover? Did you find it all? Clover. Clover, here, 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 here Clover, Clover. Here you go. Good girl, Clover. Good girl, Clover. Your treasure.
What's the matter, puppies? Whoa, 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 Charlotte. Charlotte, don't be so mean for Bobby. Oh my goodness, we got poops galore. Make a puppy poops. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. More mega puppy poops. Holy crap. It's like the length of your intestine, Desi. How is that possible? Desi, holy smokes. No, no, no. Get out of here, cool. No. No. It's a mess. Here. God.
Where's Bobby? Where's Bobby? Bobby Barker. Good girl button. Good girl button. That's a good girl. Oh, look at these. Oh, those are perfect. Holy crap. They really are perfect. I'm going to show you guys. That's a heavy bag of them, too. This is our giant bag of doggy toys. Nine, almost 90 of them. 87. 87. But they're um, so the ones with the tails. They're little dog bones. We haven't seen the dog bones yet. I don't think there's any pink ones. Dang it. They're all blue. That's okay, though. But some of them have, like, a cheap material, and this material's not cheap. Um, you take my little fast. Sorry, I'm okay, so much. I need to take the Bobby Barker with me. No, Mocha, not you. Sorry, Mocha. Yeah.
Okay, pull the 
Puppies. No, no, Mr. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, you're gonna have to come out. The puppies, hold on. Oh. Bobby. Bobby Parker. Thank <laughs> you. 
And Maisie went nuts with the potty train. Oh my goodness. Okay. He only moves puppies back now. Yeah, I think the puppies are right Like, oh, we'll do the food shelter when you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who are you? Um, you are staying here. All right, pups. Maisie. No, not you. No, not you. Clover. Clover, Clover. Come here, Clover. Clover. Come here, Clover. No, you aren't Clover. Now we're Desi. No, sweetheart, no. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Clover. Clover. 
Clover. Maisie. Stop eating pellets. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Ah. You too. Oh, it must be. A, oh, it's a pill. Or it's a, it's a kibble. There's a kibble in there. A kibble. What's up? You're welcome. What do you think of it? Oh, okay. It's different. It's different. Yeah, do you think it's kind of sour too? Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
What a mess. But honestly, it's kind of a, a lost effort to be until we change the tray anyway. So what's that? Drop back in the Oh. I'm just gonna clean up around it. Do you want me to toss out the, the contents of the tray? Yeah, I mean it's, that's why it's it's so messy. Hi Daisy.
right, everybody. Now we go back to the puppies. Through the puppies. Through the puppies. Look at all you guys just zonking out now, huh? You guys are sleepy tired. Because you had so much fun in the kitchen. So much fun in the kitchen. I'm sorry to whoever I just woke up. Someone's snoring already. Yeah. That's a tired puppy. That is a tired puppy. He's snoring already. Good puppies. Oh! <laughs> you went tumbling out, buddy. I mean, sorry. Thank you. 
ouch, ouch, ouch.
sleep over in the living room, you know?
Myra. I don't want clothes. Huh? I don't want clothes. You want brown clothes? She says she wants to put on clothes. Oh, you want to put, you want to get dressed? The clothes, the clothes on the list. lands in your tummy, but you don't poop it out for a while, right? Well, so it's not going to take as long as it does to poop, but it will take a little bit of time to get out of your tummy and um, into your, the rest of your system where it will go and make the owie get better, okay? So you got to give it some time to reach your ear. But it's not, it's not very long, not as long as pooping, but um, about 
30 minutes or so. Um, let's get you set up over here, though. So I don't know, but I'll be right there, Bella. <laughs> Was it the, um, are you talking about like that first?
coming, Bella. I'm going to bring a chair over for you to put your spray on. Or actually, I got this cable right here. Or, well, no, that's what I'm going to say. Oh, that's Ron Robin's stream. I can't forget. That's right, Robin's stream.
Um, since you mentioned it, I think that we will probably that will probably include the tote bag. You have to figure out how we collect names for the giveaway. I'm creating the the link for Robin's live stream. I, don't want, I keep forgetting about it, and so I want to do it while I'm here and thinking about it. All right, so if you're looking for the Robin stream, I do have the link set up. In fact, I'm going to put the links in the descriptions of each other's. That makes sense. I keep meaning to start doing that. I'm going to turn the TV on here.
suggest a mom to get one of those um, little donut beds, those, uh, what are they called? The soothing beds, the one that the black one that we have. Put in the food dish. I'm letting and Charlotte be kicking each other while <laughs> we're getting closer. Are you going down or what?
No, I'm <laughs> I need to find my own watch thinking <laughs> that it was going to find my <laughs> It's just what tells me about that whole thing. You know, stepping in a way for a daughter. And I me. I
Man, I just took the tracking and stupid package going to the Andrews family is still in transit. We just last updated yesterday in the middle of the night. Uh, it's pants. Oh, yeah, it's in Minneapolis. So. That makes sense. Frustrating. It's going to be delivered tomorrow. Amber, I'm not sure if you're on right now, but if you are, uh, if you're wondering about your package, it looks like the snowstorm interrupted it, um, but it's on track to be delivered tomorrow. I'm so disappointed because I was really hoping you guys would get it today. So, but tomorrow, hopefully, I don't think there's supposed to be any crazy snow coming, so. Um, yeah. Well, um, so you're on stand. I see. I see. I
these are all pooped from running around the kitchen.
Is the door 
Easy. Come on. Easy. This one. Oh, <laughs> 
Thanks, Bradley.
Let's <laughs> Oh,
Bang bang Oh, um.
It's going to be too chilly. We'll see. We'll see.
Ella. Baby. It's ready. Pick up some chips, dude. Hey guys, pick up some chips. Annabella, come on.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Stop it. Stop it. No. Stop it. Stop it. Many of you know that we rub uh, lamb chops on them to make them to smell like mama. And um, when we've been doing the mama rub on lamb chop, we've been rubbing it on Remy, Myra, and Daisy, so so that the lamb chop smells like all three mamas. I know, sweetie. Go do over the weekend. We'll do it throughout the week, too.
Hey! 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 back. Riley, please don't do that stuff. I have a migraine. I'm going to do that stuff. I'm shouting. It's not help. I'm <laughs> 
Shower. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oh my goodness, you guys really pulled it through here. Are we still connected? Are we still working? Oh, we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, oh my god. Okay. Look at this. Oh, you are such a little monster. Wasn't that a show when we were growing up? We were all the monsters. Jeez, Bradley. <laughs>
Where's the other uh, chair go? Where's the chair go? Ah! <laughs> 
Remy. Where are you, Remy? Remy. Remy. Remy, come on, Remy, go.
Hello. Thank you, Bradley. What's the login for? There are still puppies here, and they don't sleep through the night. I really don't think they're going to sleep. Come on, Bella. You can. They come in wherever they want. Come on, Bella. Come on, Bella. Come on, Bella. Come on, Bella. What? Huh? You can go 
Oh God, Hunt. Daisy, Hunt. Oh, good Hunt. Get out of there.
Bradley, can you turn that down a little bit, please? Yeah, that's better, Bradley. I just filled up their water bottle all the way and it's almost gone already. Wait, I had just filled up their water bottle almost all the way before you left or like right before we left. Now it's all the way. 
That's what this yellow cup is from. Like, Yeah, that's what it does. They figure it out. This is Mocha's food, right? This is Mocha's food, right? Yes. Well, I'm going to go tell it in a funny way, Dad. I'm just trying to ask that. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah? Sure, just give me a second.
That helps.